Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to Smith Mountain Lake. I'm Chris with Bolt Fanatics. Captain Travis, Cats and Stripers Fishing Charters. And today we're going to do a striper catch, clean, and cook. We're going to be jigging with the old Swamp Monkey Jig Head and the BKD. I'm using the same thing, but I'm using a super fluke. Let's catch a few stripers so we can show you how to clean them and cook them. Oh, baby. Doing big things. Fresh fish. When you're jigging, this is all about sitting back, watching the TV, and reeling up and down, depending on where the fish are. So really, we're actually just sitting here. We're not moving. We're just letting the fish swim by us. There's not any big schools. If you see right here, some fish coming up off the bottom. I just would jig through those guys, reeled up to them 30 feet, and dropped back down to 50 feet. You want to be right on top of their heads. At least that's the way I like to do it. I'm sure there's a hundred ways to do it. So these are the fish that we're targeting right here. We're in 62 foot of water. We have trees up to 40 feet. So they like to stick to structure. And in Smith Mountain Lake, this is a man-made lake. So all these trees are still standing. They didn't cut anything below 30 feet deep. 80% standing timber. People ask me a hundred times how I jig. Line counter reel saves my day, tells you exactly where you're at. Spinning reels are good too, because you can drop it fast, watch it on your screen go down. I use 15 pound line, P line, Aris Code Matrix 457. You can't buy this rod anymore. Whoever's equipped making these is an absolute fool. Medium action, 5 8 uh, lure rating, even though I use a three quarter. With this rod, real soft tip, real soft, what I like. But you can see the backbone in that rod too. I'm not doing anything particular, but drop this baby down. And just say we're down to where we want to be. And all you want to do, you don't want to do nothing erratic. You don't want nothing crazy. We're not jigging a big spoon here. If we're jigging a spoon, nice little jerk. We're using these flukes and jigs and anything of that nature, just little pops is all you want. That's all you want right there. You're probably not moving that rod tip 10, 12 inches. And you can do little single jerks. You can even just sit there and shake it. But you don't want nothing real erratic with a fluke or a jig head or any type of that nature. Not like a spoon. A little different than jigging a spoon. That's all you do. Little quick pops right there is all you want. So that's why I like a line counter. I know exactly where I'm at, just in case you can't see yourself on the screen. You know where you're at. It's like them fish coming up. We're not seeing a lot. Little pods, singles, and doubles. So you got this guy shooting right up at the trees. He might be coming up to what I'm looking at, at 50 feet. So if he's coming up to 50 feet, I'll drop this thing down 47, 48 feet. That way you're right there on top of his head. Beautiful fish. 
This time of year, you can't keep any fish between 30 and 40 inches. This is a beautiful 29 and a half inch. We won't keep any bigger than this any time of the year. But we don't like to put them in the cooler and just let them suffocate. So we got old Louie right here. It's got an attitude adjustment. This way, knock them, kills them right on the spot. Here we go. Don't run, baby. Oh, yeah. Travis is gonna go ahead and show you how to fillet this striper up. Yep, I'm gonna sit down, actually. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's a nice one. I like to use two knives, one for filleting, one for trimming. But uh, go under his fin here. I'm gonna stand up. Right down his belly, just to his backbone. Come right here and basically just follow his spine, about an inch of your knife. And once you get, I'd go through right down his spine. And then I'll start trimming him out. Right there on the ribs, you don't know if you can hear them, but once you get there, just kind of roll your knife up a little bit of an angle upwards and start coming right down the top of his ribs. Just like that. That way you get majority of the meat all the way down him. And you can see where you get right on the side of the bones all the way down. Flip him over and do the same thing. Some people cut the heads off to do this, I don't. There's a hundred different ways you can clean these things. This is the way I like to do it. That way when you go over the ribs, you don't spill his guts out rather than going down all the way through his ribs. Just makes a mess. Like I said, once you get about right there, just I stick it through. Go through. Some people clean these things a mile a minute. I'm not that fast, but I feel like I'm pretty good at it. I'm over them ribs, right down to them. Perfect. See, nice all the way through. When you can see daylight through there, that's what you want. Nice and clean. Some people cut this out. This got some meat right in here too. You can cut that out if you like. It's got a little bit of bone in there. Some people actually use that to make like a stock or a stew. But we're just frying here on the boat, so that's all we're gonna take of this guy. Majority of the meat. That's right, y'all. We're gonna grill it right here on the boat. Shore lunch, baby, shore lunch. All right, two nice fillets here. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna take the skin off of them, and then we'll take the red meat out. What I'll do, start at the tail, just run your knife, it's a nine inch knife, so it goes through this meat real good. All the way up, right there. And you don't wanna to get too close to the skin, right? That's right, you get all the way down, which you can do, and certain fish, that's what you wanna do, but with the striper, that's all red meat anyways. You gotta cut that off the filet anyways. That's not, that's fishy. That's not good fish, that's bad fish. And that's their, their bloodline. That's they're, their they're... lateral line. That's what. That's a high sensitive muscle. They feel the vibrations and all the stuff through the water. But you, if you skin that all the way up the skin, you know, like you would a crappie or a walleye or anything, on a striper, you gotta cut that out. So that's why if you go, you go at a thin angle, don't put pressure all the way through the skin. Yeah, you just want to stay just off of it. Yep. Take the other one. Same thing. I just turn it upside down. No problem. And if you get close to the skin, it's no big deal. You just trim it out. You see there? Beautiful. Yep. You just have to trim that one streak out, and that's really easy to get out too. And same thing. If you go all the way through the skin, 
that's all red meat and you got to trim that out. Same and thing in a catfish or anything with a red line, cut it out. Fresh or salt water. And it's not going to hurt you. You can eat it, but it's really strong, right? You ain't going to like it if, you, if you're going to eat it. And this here, this is where I'll drop this one down, get my seven inch knife. And all I do is just come right down that outside line, just like so. All you're doing is the edge of your knife, both sides. And once you get right here, cut it all the way through, about two or three inches. It's called unzipping a striper. Hold on to that piece right there, grab your meat, and just pull it right on through. And that stuff will unzip right off the side of that meat. See there? The same thing on this side. Just pinch that, and it'll come right off. And see, when you cut it at an angle, see how it comes in right here? It goes under that meat and pulls right off. Perfect. Because this will go right through the entire filet, so you have to trim it out. And then what it don't get, just trim out your, your excess there. No big deal. Sharp knives. That's key. You don't have to get every little tiny piece out. And then there's a little belly liner there, like on the filets, where it don't come out when you skin it. Just cut it out. And see right here, this is the liner where the meat attaches to the backbone. It won't hurt you either but it's tough, it's like a gristle. Cut that trim it right off if you have it. Sometimes you, you miss it, sometimes you get it. This time we got it. Just trim it right off. Do the same thing with this, this filet. Start right up here, come right down. About your tail right there and then I'll cut right on through the cutting board. hands are cold so I can't pinch it. Just trim it. See that right there? And you ain't got to trim nothing on that guy. Zip it. Yep. Unzip and a striper just like you. Toss that in for the channel cats. Nothing goes to waste. If we don't eat it, somebody will. Turtles, catfish, perch. We'll wash it off here in our, in our organic sink here. This is I mean, you can't get more organic than this. All natural, no hormones, GMOs, got all the gluten in it. Whatever the gluten is, can't eat that. Don't know why. Right there in that nice organic sink. Look at her. That's called water conservative. Going green on this boat. It doesn't get any fresher than this. The only fresher than that sushi. But that baby right there is gonna be fine. Shore lunch, February. It's chilly, but it's a nice day. Oh, this warms it up real good. We got our old magma right here. Take the cover off of it. This is real nice to have on the boat. All this baby uses, one of the small camping propane cylinders. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, baby. They're doing big things now. <laughs> Got our old cast iron skillet. That baby's greased up, ready to go. That's just as good as a pocket on a t-shirt right there. I think childproof, ain't it? <laughs> I like to use peanut oil, but today... Vegetable is just as good. It'll work. Yeah. Let that get hot. We're gonna go ahead and prepare the striper now. So now we're just gonna make chunks with it. Yep, that's all we're gonna do. I like a big chunk of fish when I fry it. Everybody's different. Some people like nuggets. You like chunks? I like chunks. Oh, we're doing chunks. About two, three fingers, big chunks. It's nice big chunks of fish. This old bottom piece, just cut that baby right in half. Oh, that's perfect. Look how thick that is. Oh, that's good. I like oh, fish. Man. I like fish when I eat fish. I don't like bread. I don't like to soak it in water. I don't like to sit it in salt water overnight like you do a rabbit. Just like that, it takes the flavor out of it. Now we're trying something different. Now me, I love this. Travis has never be or breaded it the way I'm gonna do it today. Today. I'm a big spring meal guy. Well, we're gonna show him the Bisquick way of battering this fish. I love new things. So the good thing about using this Bisquick is it's already in the container. All you need to do, it, it says about a half a cup-ish. That is uh, 
guesstimation. And then, shake and bake, baby. Shake weights. <laughs> if that lid comes off, you're in trouble. <laughs> now what we do, take the lid off, pour the goodness in the bag, and go ahead and dump all these good old striper fillets. Man, did you know we were going to eat so good today? I'll tell you what, boat fanatics, cats and stripers, together again. All boat up tour, 2019, yep. continuing on. Starting off right here in February. Might be 30 something degrees out, but daggone, it's warm on this boat. Y'all think a shot of, shot of hard drink or a cup of coffee will warm me up, this is a whole lot better than that. All right, now that that's all mixed up, now we're just waiting on the oil to finish heating up. Bitch quick's good on it to me. Mm -hmm. Got that oil nice and hot. Start dropping some of these babies in there. Oh, oh man. You don't want to cook it long. You can overcook a striper like a tuna and dry it out real easy. Using that Bisquick gives that batter just a real nice sweet taste to it. What's so awesome about striper is it's got it's like a firm fish. It's real meaty. It's, it's white. flaky. Yeah. White meat. You can overcook it real easy and dry it out. Like most fish you cook to a golden brown. This stuff you kind of cook it to a light brown. And if you dry it out, you'll be bringing out to catch it. You might as well just throw it out in the yard for the dog then. You may have to flip it a couple times. You want that nice brown coat on the outside. Oh, oh yeah, look at that boy, good. Uh, get the oil nice and hot. You only need about three, four minutes on each side. You can see right here how that one piece in the center is starting to split. That's when you know a striper's done. That's how you, that's how it's actually starting to dry out. Not not yet. So but, like the flakes there? Yep, see how things starting to flake without even touching it? That's when you know it's starting to get done. Delicious. I say it's done. Bring it on out. We'll put the next batch in. Let's let it dry on this paper towel here. Soak up some of the oil. And then the final touch that we do here. Y'all with cholesterol probably don't want this. <laughs> What's that Georgia woman? Hey, y'all. Yeah. Oh, man. How about them apples right yonder? All right, you get first piece, buddy. Oh, God. Look at that, right there, falling apart. That's what you want. Juicy, not overcooked. Good stuff. Oh, baby. Mm. Perfect. Cheers, y'all. Mmm. <laughs> what do you think? That's... I said it's the sexiest socks on the rooster right there. <laughs> good, 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 really good. You don't All need right. no sides. You don't need no forks. Oop. Ain't no leftovers neither. That's a wonderful thing right here. Simple Oop. as it gets. And you don't get that in no restaurant. But I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I'm, we enjoying, are, I'm enjoying this. We're enjoying it right now. We still have two more batches to go. But we're going to leave y'all here. I hope y'all learned a little something. If you want to know anything else, please comment below. Subscribe to both of us. Cats and Stripers. And Bolt Fanatics. Thank y'all for watching.